Beautiful. So we should be recording now. Um, well, I number one, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Great to see so many faces on our call. Um, what we're going to be doing today is talking about the Youth Homeless Demonstration Program um, request for applications, or if we want to shorten it, as we probably will throughout this presentation, because that's quite a mouthful. Um, it's the RFA for the YHDP for the Balance of State Continuum of Care area. Um, and so very exciting that we have been awarded this um, for our Balance of State region. Technology and hasn't been my friend for the past couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get my earphones to work and then they didn't connect. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to move somewhere quieter. <laughs> Great. Um, well, and actually that's a nice, uh, I'll hold off for a minute, but, um, I, my name's Brittany Wade. I'm with the office of homeless youth services within, uh, the, D the Colorado division of housing. Um, so we'll be administering this grant on the division of housing side, but I also wanted, um, the members of our youth action board that are with us today to introduce themselves. So if you don't mind coming off mute and just saying, Hi, um, and maybe sharing your name and your location. Yes, yeah, Savannah, Ray, and Lizzie. I guess I'll go first. Uh, my name is Soraya. Um, I am located in Colorado Springs, Colorado, as a uh, youth move po Vesta. Thank you. And it's at the place. I forgot to add that too. <laughs> My name's Lizzie. Um, I'm a Youth Move Colorado Vista, and I serve at Shiloh House. What region is that, Elizabeth? Um, It'd be Northeast Plains. Okay, thank you. Oh, Savannah, do you want to? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear anybody. Oh, uh, can you hear us now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you want to just introduce yourself as a um, Youth Action Board member and just name and where you're located? Yeah, I'm Savannah. I'm a AmeriCorps VISTA member for Youth Move Colorado, and um, I work at Together. It's in North Boulder on like Pine and 14th, and they do um, youth homelessness like they try to end it. That's their mission. Awesome. And Brittany, I'll just hop in. And as a reminder, um, as a part of YHDP, you each will be getting a VISTA for your region. And so we had uh, members serving in Balance of State Colorado, but those terms of services for them have ended. And now we are getting ready to bring on our next core that will be serving in your communities. Um. And then Karen and Carlton, I thought I saw maybe that you came off mute, but maybe I was like imagining things. Go ahead and introduce. Uh, hi, this is Carlton. I'm with Casa the Seventh, and uh, Karen's with me. Go ahead, Karen. And I'm Karen Slater. Hi, and we're trying to get our one of our peers to come in, in as soon as she gets off the phone. So, okay, great. Um, well, again, wanted to thank everyone for joining. Uh, we'll be kind of going through um, a high level overview of um, the RFA. Uh, and so we'll try to leave some time for questions about any of that so that we can um, chat through it and make sure y'all get any of your questions answered as you're going through the application process. Um, and so here's our quick agenda. Oh my goodness. Huh. Sorry, I'm wondering now if some of my slides will be a little cut off at the top. <laughs> here's our agenda. Um, so we'll talk through some of OHI's, um, which is the Office of Homeless Initiatives, which is where my office lives within the Colorado Division of Housing. Um, and so just kind of talking about some of our philosophies about um, means toward ending homelessness and how we do that and how some of our programs work, um, doing a Youth Move Colorado overview. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the RFA 
um, in the background, the funding availability, who can apply, um, out eligible um, activities and applicants, uh, a little bit about the coordinated community plan goals and metrics, um, some of our performance outcomes, and then talking a little bit more about the application submission and attachments, as well as the review process for that, and then leaving time for Q&A at the end. Um, so feel free if there are questions throughout. Um, we have some folks monitoring the chat, so they will either be able to answer the questions in there or call them out um, since I'm man I'm managing too many screens, I think, at this point to like monitor all of that. So bear with me if you have questions or anything. Um, we will do our best to get to them in a timely manner. Um, so like I said, in terms of talking about uh, some of the key goals and approaches that OHI uses, um, you know, we really want to stop homelessness before it starts. We want to identify individuals who are at risk, connect them with supports, um, and create access to long-term structural solutions. Uh, so really some of the ways that we're doing this is making sure that we're leading with equity. So making sure that we're doing it through anti-racist practices and community-driven solutions, uh, making sure that we have real-time person-specific data uh, can really help us in understanding what is going on in the landscape, making sure that we are housing focused. So if we're having conversations with folks and we're not talking about housing, we may be having some of the wrong conversations. Um, so just making sure that we are always housing focused as we're thinking about that and then thinking about cross-sector partnerships, which I think YHGP is a really great example of in terms of bringing folks to the table that may not have participated in the housing space before to support our young folks. Um, and then some of the proven solutions and some of these uh, crossover with YHGP just in terms of prevention and diversion, coordinated entry systems, rapid rehousing, um, supportive services, making sure that uh, shelters or services are low barrier, um, so just knowing that uh, a, a lot of this YHCP work lines up really nicely with all of the um, proven solutions that uh, the Division of Housing is, is utilizing already. So we do have um, some supports and resources along those lines as you are getting into some of these programs. Um, and then, whew, okay, so fingers crossed volume works on this, however, please let me know if you can't hear this. Um, this is a recording, um, and Carmen will explain and go into all of that as well, but um, is a recording from the Youth Action Board um, and chatting a bit about YHGP. Yeah, Brittany, we can't hear. I don't know if there's a button to push. Oh, you can't hear it? Oh, sorry. I thought I saw someone nod their head that they could. Okay. Hold while I... <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Okay. It was the way I was sharing. It didn't like it. Okay. Let's... Hey, everyone. Can you hear me now? I'm super excited to be here. My name my name is Carmen Illisoy. I use she, her pronouns. For those of you that don't know, I am the YHDP Youth Program Coordinator. So I'm going to be here talking to y'all a little bit about Youth Move Colorado, as well as some different YHDP requirements that 
will be really helpful for y'all moving forward. Um, the reason I am doing this recording is because I wasn't able to be there uh, with y'all via Zoom due to a conflict, but we have some amazing vistas on the call with y'all, Lizzie, Savannah, and Soraya that will be able to answer any questions or comments that y'all have regarding anything um, I'm going to be presenting and talking to y'all about. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And yeah, thanks for, for having me. All righty. Awesome. Well, first off, we are really, really thankful for all the community participation in the creation of the Coordinated Community Plan. As a reminder, the CCP is what will guide your local effort. So please, please, please reference that when you're going through your work. We are excited that we are now at the point of completing the application, and we're excited to see what you all come up with. A couple of key points um, to keep in mind are what makes YHDP so unique is that it is youth led. And this is because of not just best practice within a grant, but also it's per HUD's requirements that this grant is youth led, which is why making sure your applications represent that is pivotal. Um, through recruiting Youth Move Colorado VISTA members, as well as YHDP fellows for your region, and making sure that youth and young adults are being listened to and included in your plan will all demonstrate your application being youth-led. Another important key thing is we have been working side by side with DOH during the RFP process to make sure that this process continues to be youth driven. These are some of the things that you can expect from Youth Move Colorado during this process on the slide in front of you. Um, as I mentioned before, this is truly a youth led effort. We are the Youth Move Colorado is the um, Youth Action Board for the Balance of State Continuum of Care. Therefore, we are the Youth Action Board for YHTP. Youth Move Colorado is here to speak truth to power. We must build a strategy that supports youth over time and over trouble. And we are challenging the Balance of State COC including all of you, to go beyond easy reaches and build a plan that serves all youth in rural Colorado, right? And that's really touching on making sure that your plan doesn't just um, focus on your specific county, right? Making sure that your plan is mobile and making sure that you are meeting the young people where they are at. We are also here for a call to action. You know, we cannot afford to not act now to prevent and end youth homelessness. With that all being said, Youth Move Colorado, throughout this entire process, will continue to guide and monitor and use their expertise in all of these things to help you all succeed. To give some more framework for what you can expect from Youth Move Colorado, as well as the Colorado YHTP you know, community based off the coordinated community plan. So these are all of the values that we have created in alignment with the coordinated community plan. And these values can be found on page six of the YHTP CCP. And they are the foundation for all of our efforts within YHDP. So it can be really helpful and is really important during your application process that you reference the, these values and make sure that all of your plans align with these core values, right? Equity, innovation, collaboration, youth-informed practice, as well as acceptance. And I just want to highlight acceptance for a little bit, right? It's saying we accept people as their whole authentic 
self. Acceptance builds trust, safety, and well-being. And right, a lot of what we're talking about in this is the acceptance of bringing in young people within your spaces to really inform the decisions that you're making, right? And making sure that there is power sharing um, being implemented within these systems, right? That young people aren't just coming in, being a part of your system and becoming tokenized. We don't want that. We want them to truly be leading and being heard and seen through your efforts. Now pivoting into what our CCP asks each of us to do, right? This slide demonstrates the goal of the CCP, our targeted population, what the CCP is, and a condensed version of what our YHDP project activities will be. Youth Move Colorado's role in this will be helping to implement the approved Balance of State Youth Coordinated Entry System and supporting mobile navigation and increasing access to supports. Within the CCP, this is represented as the youth-led SSO project, also known as the youth-led support services only project. Over the next two years of our YHDP demonstration program, we are going to be working together to build a system that aligns with the CCP's goals. Those goals can be found on page 37 of the CCP. Although we will be selecting or we will be working collectively um, on all of these goals, as a region, you are being asked to prioritize specific goals within the CCP um, to begin with. In addition, each region will be asked to identify with our support both a Youth Move Colorado AmeriCorps VISTA with lived expertise and a youth fellow who will help your local region on YHDP. For more information on what that entails and what that could look like, see goal four on page 44 of the CCP. And as you know, I'm referencing the CCP a lot during this time just to highlight how important it is that y'all kind of look through it and read it because it's really going to help you um, help you through this. And then finally, we encourage you to review the strategies within the CCP starting on page 18 and incorporating them into your application. There are more details on the project types we chose for YHDP funding starting on page 59. And if you read from Appendix A for round six of YHDP, you can take full advantage, we've taken full advantage of all of um, the YHDP flexibilities. During your application process, we really encourage you all to create innovative ideas and, and different creative projects that are allowed within the framework of YHDP. Pivoting a little into the Youth Move Colorado AmeriCorps VISTA program, right? That you all are being asked to identify one of those members. This is um, part of their VAD. And as you can see, you see advocacy, navigation, coaching, organizing, and mutual aid. And this is essentially the framework that they use to guide them within their year of service. So this is kind of what you can expect them to be working on, among other YHDP things. As a youth board, we established these as our priorities for YHDP, and we hope to see the regional applications reflect if of these as well, right? So it's really important that when you're creating your application, you're making sure that you know, your applications reflect many, um, if not all of these. Most The most important thing is that we are asking each region to work together to build a response using YHDP funding. Let's say you have multiple partners who will be part of your application. 
You will learn more in this webinar about different options that you can choose that best support your community plan. We are also reminding you that the work in your communities needs to be mobile and you need to be able to meet young people where they're at. This slide shows a list of the threshold requirements that the Youth Move Colorado YAB created. You can think of these as expectations we will have of all subgrantees once awarded. Some important things to keep in mind when referencing this slide are if you don't currently have a lived experience youth advisor, you can request a Youth Move Colorado Vista to assist you. Um, there are three amazing VISTAs on the call today, Lizzie, Savannah, and Soraya. So I encourage all of you to reach out to them uh, if you're needing support in this, right? We will also be launching our YHDP Community of Practice in January with an orientation on the YVAL. Once you have a Youth Move Colorado VISTA member recruited, they will be trained to assist you in being successful in YHDP. So you're just adding more support and more capacity to your team as well, which is really, really important. Alongside this, we're going to have multiple trainings along the way that will help you grow youth voice and engagement. But a great way to start is by identifying that Youth Move Colorado Vista, as well as the YHDP fellow within your region, and to start having your project already reflect what young people in your region are saying they want. Some additional trainings we will be providing are youth peer support trainings, and we're going to be involved continuously through this. All righty. So yeah, I know that was a lot. <laughs> um, and again, if y'all have any questions in real time, feel free to ask Lizzie, Savannah, or Soraya, and then pretty sure Denise is on as well. Um, but if the mean in the in the meantime, if there aren't any, here is a list of um, any and all the contact information on Youth Move Colorado's side that might be helpful for you moving forward. Um, and it just kind of goes through if you're needing help with youth voice in your application, email this. Um, if you have questions around coordinated community plan, Kippy's a great contact. About the Youth Move Colorado Vista program, Kippy's a great contact again. And then the fellows program, I would be your go-to contact there. And there's our emails below. And then questions about more uh, technical assistance with the application as well as the RFA uh, DOH will be your go-to on that. So yeah, thank you all again. I'm going to stop screen sharing. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for taking this time to, yeah, just hear me speak to you. And yeah, I hope this meeting is really informative and continues to get you all excited about um, the work in Colorado. Thanks. Wonderful. Um, so I think that's a great kind of starting point for understanding um, the the youth involvement in YHGP and what that looks like and how that guides um, how we're operating throughout it. The rest of this is going to be a little bit more like nitty gritty about the RFA itself and kind of um, what that looks like. Oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Sorry about that. Um, so the RFA itself was informed by um, HUD or Housing and Urban Development. It is part of the round six YHCP award that was granted to the Colorado Balance of State. And so we are awarded funding um, for uh, the joint component, which is transitional housing and rapid rehousing supportive services only and supportive services um, coordinated entry. We we're also awarded for HMIS. Um, however, since DOH took over as the um, 
the Collaborative African Applicant and HMIS Lead for Balance of State, uh, that money will be going toward uh, managing the HMIS system. However, we are able to help support with licenses and onboarding and training and all of that um, for any folks that that need to either get in or get more folks at your organization in in order to support this uh, effort. Um, so the target population, I think Carmen talked about this a, a lot, but really youth, um, anyone 24 and under, so they just have not reached their 25th birthday. So we can uh, work with unaccompanied youth, pregnant and parenting youth, uh, youth who identify as Black, Indigenous, or people of color, LGBTQIA+, youth with disabilities or other health issues, um, and uh, youth involved with foster care and juvenile justice, as well as uh, human trafficking survivors. Um, and then participants must meet category one, two, or four of HUD's definition, so literal homelessness, imminent risk of homelessness, and fleeing violence or who this uh, funding can serve. Um, so looking at the total amount of funding, um, we have $2,206,000. <laughs> Sorry, $2.2 .2 million essentially with some change after that. Um, and so each region, and this will kind of be depending because it depends on what each region is applying for, what they get approved for, um, and and how many applications come in. So this would kind of be if every region applied and they applied for every um, every category, they could be awarded up to three hundred fifteen thousand dollars and some change. Um, so. I wouldn't get like too married to the amounts here, but this is kind of to give folks an idea of what that's looking like. Um, and then looking at eligible applicants. Um, so project applications can come from nonprofit organizations, local governments, states. Um, for-profit entities are not able to apply for these grant funds or be the subrecipients of these grant funds. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, and then projects need to be located in either um, one of the balance of state COC regions. So Grand Valley, Roaring Fork and Eagle Valleys, Western Slope, Southwest Colorado, San Luis Valley, Upper Arkansas Valley and Northeastern Plains. Um, and then I know Carmen also alluded to this in her video but only one application will be accepted per region so that means um, even if it'll be different organizations um, administering different parts of the program uh, it'll be one application that is submitted together outlining kind of who will be doing what um, and part of this is because this is coming from a coordinated community plan, and we'd like this to be a coordinated community approach. Um, so making sure that all of the organizations in that region are working together to make sure that we're administering the best uh, YHDP that we possibly can. Um, and so the eligible activities, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, so the joint component that is transitional housing and rapid rehousing, um, so this will be um, support for running those programs. Um, we do have a lot of resources on DOH's website around like rapid rehousing and some of these other. So I don't wanna get like too in the weeds as to what exactly like transitional housing and rapid rehousing are, but um, these are resources for our young adults um, and can just they within the YHG, we can transition from transitional housing to rapid rehousing. Um, and then um, we have supportive services only. And uh, under this, um, I think a lot of the communities have identified host homes as an awesome. I'm so sorry, folks, that I'm having so much trouble talking today. Um, Supportive services only. Host homes will live under the supportive services only. Um, and uh, 
and it will be like the the outreach and the um so as it may sound supportive services that are being provided to um young folks and then carmen also referenced uh so there's a supportive services only coordinated entry there is a youth led kind of like component of that um, but then there is funding to give to organizations to help support what the youth led component is kind of implementing um, and help to build up the coordinated the youth coordinated entry system. Uh, so ensuring that um, there are opportunities for having housing navigation and diversion, um, drop in and outreach services that are mobile, um, especially just kind of given the vast area that the balance of state covers um, and using a paired approach of youth peer support and agency staff to ensure that youth voice is centered. Um, and so the uh, these are some that Carmen went over as well. Um, and these are just kind of some of the essential elements. So positive youth development, trauma-informed care, family engagement, housing first. Um, and as Carmen said, that they will be doing uh, presentations and some learning communities about a lot of these components. Um, and so once, um, and those will start in January, I believe. Um, and so just kind of keeping your eyes out for that um, and planning to attend those um, peer learning communities. Um, and then we're thinking about the coordinated community plan, thinking about the um, goals and metrics. So um, having an awareness of the resources to prevent homelessness, um, cross system collaboration. And I think, again, these pair really, really well with the, um, the metrics that the Office of Homeless Initiatives has. So, you know, the cross system collaboration, um, connecting with resources, uh, real-time data, so that's improving the housing continuum and, and keeping, um, and making sure that that we have real-time data to kind of understand where folks fit in there. Um, and then having the out, outreach, the upstream system linkages, homeless provider participation, um, representation, exits. So again, making sure that we've got data in there. Um, and all of this is is leading to the, the need to enter our data um, into HMIS. So if you are awarded funding for YHGP, you will be required to enter data into HMIS. Um, and then so looking, I know this is a really, really text heavy um, slide. This is all in the RFA as well. Um, but knowing that um, it, youth action boards will need to be implemented. Um, and those are things that your Youth Move Colorado Vistas can provide support with um, and ensuring that uh, young youth voice or young folks voice is centered as we're developing any of these plans. And then there's regular collection of feedback from young people. Um, and, and then that we are developing youth specific access points in order to help them seek housing and services and be added to the by name list. Uh, without having to present at an adult shelter facility. And then within the first year of this funding being awarded out, we would like communities to participate in a training uh, for the Built for Zero scorecard. Um, and we can talk further about the Built for Zero scorecard, but the, the whole idea is kind of starting to look at your, your system and your landscape and starting to think about um, what does the data that we're collecting look like? Who are other folks that we need to have at the table to make sure that we have quality data? Um, and how do we make sure that we as a system are all working together? Um, and so that's kind of what those those next ones say. And, and just that we're making progress toward um, completing that scorecard and getting um, a progress toward getting better and more quality data. And then, like I just said, utilization of HMIS or the Homeless Management Information System. Um, there's a lot of data that will be entered into there and, and pooled and HUD has specifically created um, data reports based on the YHGP um, that can be pooled from HMIS. So just know that that is gonna be kind of like the 
end all be all of, of data collection. Um, and we may ask a few other things uh, just to kind of check in on how programs are going. Um, and then collaboration and documentation of how the entire balance of state region is being covered. Um, so making sure that uh, your entire region is being covered by these services that you're setting up. And so thinking about how to access kind of outside of your area and that may be pulling in other organizations that have different coverage areas than your own to think about how you will ensure that uh, throughout your region, young folks are able to access resources and services. Um, now to the exciting stuff, the application, it's due on December 8th um, by 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, so just making sure that um, it should kind of be these like three attachments. So like a narrative of all your application responses, as one PDF, a PDF of all of the application attachments. Um, so if you've looked through the application, that's kind of all of the, the like SAM.gov stuff or your signatory authority for the organizations that are being awarded funding. Um, and so let me know, I'm happy to chat with folks if that becomes really complicated as you are combining a lot of stuff for um several different organizations happy to chat through how to like best do that or if, if we need to think about that in a different way um and then doing the budget and just making sure that it's set with permission um so that we can just like access the if you're adding stuff up within that spreadsheet um that we can see those formulas and whatnot uh, and then in terms of the review process it will be DOH as well as Youth Move Colorado reviewing um, the applications. If a Youth Move Colorado VISTA was participating in like writing or getting together your application, they will have to recuse themselves from looking at and scoring that organization's application um, so that there's not any bias there. Uh, but know that uh, we will all be a part of reviewing that. Um, there is a cure period so if if it got submitted and did not contain all of the necessary elements or that there were things that needed some clarification we will reach back out and say hey we need x y and z by x date uh, to let folks know that we need that turned back in um, you will be informed in writing um, of what award components and amounts and then um, the grants will begin in the first quarter of 2024. And I know that that's really um, vague. I would anticipate them being up and running by April um, with the hope that things may happen before that. But I would, when you're starting to think about things, think about um, April for sure. Uh, and then the grants will run through March 31st, 2026. So that's uh, two years of funding within this grant. Um, so also when you're thinking about your budgets, think about two-year projections and what that will look like as you're ramping a program up. Okay, that was a lot. Hopefully not like super new information, but um, also just wanting to leave some time for questions or any specifics about the RFA. It's also okay if you need to like process this and want to email later, <laughs> um, but this is, um, yeah, so Kippy, it, what Kippy's talking about, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kippy, is just that all of the work that went into the coordinated community plans should be really easily transferable onto the application um, in terms of, of planning and outlining some of those things for your community and what, what the plan was. Yeah, and just to um, put it in context, over the summer, um, 
we came around and visited with each region and had local meetings to kind of explain this process and go through kind of the youth questions. Um, so this is the same information. It just has been collapsed into the application with DOH. So if you worked on that worksheet and or followed up with some of the activities post the August summit, you should have a lot of this information um, already together. Um, DOH was great in trying to make sure that this was not a massive heavy lift to get this application in because we know that many of you um, are not only serving youth, but you're the grant writer in your organization. So we wanted to make sure that this is there, but Brittany and the team at DOH can definitely ask the more technical stuff, but that, that worksheet should help you out. Okay. Um, well then, I'm gonna stop recording and um